Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started. Um, so I'm Kate Chapman. I'm the chairperson of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. And I'm going to talk about <laughs> the, what, uh, what the OpenStreetMap Foundation is, why it exists, um, how it exists, how we operate, and how also you can get involved. So I'm going to set some ground rules first. One of the things that's difficult within the OpenStreetMap community and foundation is speaking from the foundation. So if you see this chicken, that's me, Wonderchuk, speaking my opinion. If you see the OpenStreetMap logo, that's a fact about the OpenStreetMap Foundation that I hope most of us wouldn't argue about. Uh, because I wanted to speak about how things are now, but also how I think they should be. And I think it's important to be clear. I also just wanted to give a little background on my OpenStreetMap st story. Um, so I joined OpenStreetMap in 2009, which sounds pretty old for some of you. Um, raise your hand if you started doing OpenStreetMap before 2009. I look, and I know who to look at. Um, but then I'm assuming everyone else was 2009 or after. Um, and I started just mapping my neighborhood. Uh, and I actually joined the OpenStreetMap Foundation right at that time and then was really confused about all these people fighting on a mailing list about things I didn't really understand. Um, but then I went to my first state of the map in Spain and started to meet people, and that was when I started running for the OpenStreetMap Foundation. I lost three elections in a row. Um, so it's, I guess I, you could say that I'm stubborn, that I'm standing up here. And then I became the chairperson uh, uh, about five or six months ago, actually. So I'm going to start with more on the fact side of things, but also a little bit of opinion. So first, the why. Why does the OpenStreetMap Foundation exist? Well, if you've edit, ever edited in OpenStreetMap, you've touched the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Um, the servers are owned. Um, by the foundation. The license um, is held by the foundation. You need a legal entity to do that. Um, Steve Coast could, I guess, technically have owned all that, but that's not a way for a community to expand. You need an organization that's not owned by anyone. Um, it reduces liability, um, and it also there's financial reasons as well. So then there's the how side of the foundation. Uh, for a little background, we're incorporated as a nonprofit in the UK, not a charity. Um, it's sort of the level below that. We're entirely volunteer run. Keeping up with the charity requirements would be rather difficult. And the OpenStreetMap Foundation is made up entirely of volunteers. I can say now there's a slight exception to that. We have someone who helps us with accounting and bookkeeping. But other than that, the foundation is run by volunteers. Uh, we have a board of directors, um, who quite a few of are here. Wave if you're on the board, and Hank's back there as well. Um, you weren't close enough for me to see you conveniently. Um, so I'm the chairperson, and then Paul Norman is the secretary, and Frederick Rahm is the treasurer, and then we have four other members at, at large. And so we're the ones who actually have the fiduciary, financial, legal responsibility for the organization. Um, we're elected from the OpenStreetMap membership. So there's three types of membership. Um, there's normal members and associate members, and those are humans, individuals. Um, and the reason there's two classes of membership is, so in the UK Companies Act, if you're really into UK corporate law, um, you have to have the actual addresses and names of people as your membership. And so the normal members are those people who have volunteered to be publicly, well not publicly, like it's not listed on our website, but if someone wanted to look at the membership role, they would get that list. And then the associate members aren't providing their address and that extra information. And then the corporate members are corporations. So the yearly cost of the membership, um, normal members and associate members is 15 pounds, and corporate members is 1,000 pounds. 
Uh, the normal and the associate members uh, can both run and, or, I'm sorry, the normal members can be on the board um, and run for the board. Both the normal and the associate members can vote for the board. Corporate members are organizations that want to support the OpenStreetMap Foundation uh, from a corporate pr perspective. Personally, I don't think the membership currently reflects the diversity of the project. Uh, raise your hand if you're a member of the OpenStreetMap Foundation. No, Peter? You don't know. Okay. Wow. Anyway, it's not that many. And I encourage all of you to join the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Think about it. If you make an edit, you're touching the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Why wouldn't you want to be a, a member of the organization that's supporting that? Um, we don't have a lot of members outside of North America and Europe. Um, if you don't have access to PayPal or a bank transfer, it can be very it could be difficult to pay the membership, for example. And you know, there's it's just, it's just we ha we don't do a lot of recruitment as well. And so, I really think it's something as a project we we should think about. We're really changing as an organization. But if the membership doesn't reflect that, we will end up with people that are the same as us. Uh, I'm working on uh, revamping the corporate membership because there's not a lot of benefits right now. You basically pay 1,000 pounds and you get listed on our website, which we appreciate your money and it, and it helps. But as a, not all corporations see a lot of value in that. So looking at ways that corporations can better be able to talk to the foundation uh, we're never going to pro provide some huge level of support, but more engagement than we currently do. So the working groups uh, are where the actual work gets done within the foundation. Um, so we have our communications working group. Uh, they do interviews, post blog posts, manage social media, the communications section. Uh, the data working group. Who is here from the data working group? Thank you. I think this is one of the hardest working groups. These are people who handle things like imports and disputes. They get told off by people because the boundary is not where someone thinks it should be. It, it's, a hard, it's, it's a hard job. Um, but needed. To keep, they help keep the map open. Uh, the engineering working group, the licensing working group, once again, one of the things about having an open map is the, is the legal and licensing side of it. The local chapters working group. Local chapters is a recent thing with an open street map. And what it is is it actually gives you legal agreement with the Open Street Map Foundation. State of the map itself is a trademark of the Open Street Map Foundation. And we sort of casually let people use it now. Um, same with Open Street Map itself is a trademark. But having an actual agreement of people to be able to use those things, um, spelling it out. Um, then the operations working group. So those servers you touch when you edit, who keeps those up? We are actually the hardest working group. OK. <laughs> well, I, I was actually thinking of emotional work when I was talking about the uh, data working group. <laughs> the hardest in uh, keeping the servers up, yes. We, we would be nowhere without the operations working group. And then the state of the map organizing committee. Um, so typically, there is an international state of the map conference. Um, for those of you not familiar with the intricacies of, op of OpenStreetMap, you may not be aware. This is the OpenStreetMap US conference, which is aimed to be an international conference this year. But there's also one that moves around, uh, put on by the OpenStreetMap Foundation. I'm a little hand wavy on the budget, and I'm looking at Frederick. I think our budget is, a, is about this for this year. And part of that is we um, spend, working groups ask for money, and it's just whether or not they actually need to spend it and ask for money. Um, the major part of this is actually buying servers. What was that? Um, I think the pound is about 1.5 at the moment. So. How much? Yeah, around $150,000. Thank you. <laughs> it is very low. Um, 
Sorry about that. I operate in a lot of currencies at once. So anyway, $150,000. So there was a poll in 2006 that said we were going to spend it in this way. 60% on hardware, hardware, which I've misspelled, 20% on promotion, and 20% on legal matters, which isn't quite how it works out, but most of the money is spent on hardware. Personally, I think we need to increase fundraising to support the growth of the project. There's major technical hurdles that we are eventually we are coming up about against as the usage increases. Um, more and more people start editing OpenStreetMap using the data, which is really amazing, the success of the project. But we need to make sure we have the financials to support that. Also, some people still want to spend based on this decision made in 2006. I wasn't even involved in the project in 2006. I had never heard of OpenStreetMap. And it's not all about me, but how many other people are that way as well? Uh, so thinking through um, how do we better support the project as it is today. Here's the other thing. Um, I like to think in large sums of money. Um, I also was involved in the humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. I took the budget from zero dollars to a million dollars a year. And people sometimes ask, why is HOT able to do all of this? It's money. But here's the thing. People don't give you a million dollars when you have no staff. It's just, who's going to watch the money? Who's going to do an audit? Who's going to do the reporting? Very difficult to do from volunteers. There is a management aspect of that. Um, it's fairly typical to spend 10% on operations costs from a donation. Um, some organizations spend a lot more than that. So if someone, per se, gave us a million dollars, we could expect to spend 100000 managing that money. And that means hiring someone to do it. And I come from a nonprofit background, and that's why I think about these things. I mean, I also come from an engineering and mapping background, but I've had to learn, how do you actually raise that money? And then there's the other side of it. I hear a lot that people are worried about corporate control of the project. But there's this aim to keep the OpenStreetMap Foundation weak, um, to support but not control the project. Well, I understand the aspect of not controlling it, but by not controlling it, are we really supporting it? It allows single organizations can come in and do, throw some money around and do various things. Whereas if the foundation had a little more strength, we could drive the ship. You know, I'm not trying to be negative. Um, OpenStreetMap at one point was a niche project. You know, I used to, I started out mapping trails in my neighborhood to show up the rich neighborhood next door. I mean, a pretty niche um, project for me at the time. But look at the impact. Look at the impact in Nepal. Like, I think it was six or 7,000 people edited OpenStreetMap and Kathmandu Living Labs, the local OpenStreetMap community was working with first responders. How impressive is that? Seeing our maps, on Foursquare, thinking about corporate-related activities within Apple, you know, within major news sites. How awesome is that? And also, it's easier with all these organizations using the data for us to use it. It's not a matter of setting up your own personal map rendering. You can just go use one that exists. I mean, you still have that freedom to build your own stack and do your own analysis, but you don't have to be super technical anymore. So, the getting involved. Uh, so, first, you can join the OpenStreetMap Foundation. Um, we also, we have a table set up with OpenStreetMap US here. Um, so, if you want the opportunity to talk to us, um, someone will be there, probably not all of the hours, but you can, there's plenty of us here who can discuss. Um, those of us, those of you who are sponsors and are going to um, the sp there's a sponsor cocktail hour tonight. Uh, quite a few of us from the foundation will be there as well. Come talk or simply just join. Um, and then beyond joining, you can volunteer to help. And volunteering to help doesn't mean my volunteering it to help and look, I'm up here as the chairperson. It could be just writing a blog post. Uh, is actually probably the single, uh, an example of something really concrete that you could do within the communications working group. 
um, volunteer for a working group. Or there's a whole list of my, like little things that you could do that are just a one-time thing to help. Let's not forget, though, happy mapping. And the chicken wanted a word as well. And I also wanted to make sure to leave quite a bit of time for questions. Uh, do we have any? I can just repeat the question. Uh, so what were the payment methods that we offer? Uh, PayPal, bank transfer, and I feel like there's a third, but maybe not. PayPal and bank transfer. If, and, Because I believe we do support Bitcoin donation, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Andy. Does that work? Ooh. Um, no, I wanted to say on the payment methods, we also have a membership waiver program for people who aren't able to pay for it. Um, they can apply uh, and it will be considered by the foundation to see to whether to offer membership on a zero cost basis. Or, or a benefit in kind basis, I think it is. Yeah, actually, thanks for reminding me. That was in my talk, but I forgot about it. Uh, as far as I know, no one ever has actually requested the waiver, I, is my understanding. And, you, you know, uh, 15 pounds, roughly $25 a year, doesn't seem a lot to many of us. Um, but um, I, I, I've worked in a lot of communities where it, it is a big deal. That is a big deal. Um, you know, for example, when I lived in Indonesia, you could go get lunch for maybe a dollar, dollar fifty. So, how many lunches are you spending on your OpenStreetMap Foundation membership versus in the U.S. You could easily spend twenty-five dollars on lunch. Um, and also, back to the not having access to PayPal, or let's say the bank transfer costs you fifty dollars, which it would if you're doing that in the U.S. So, keep that in mind. You can request a waiver. Brian. Can you hear me? Um, regarding your statement about support but not control, if the OpenStreetMap Foundation had more control, where do you think the direction would be? Would they set a direction for the community to follow? And do you know what that would be? Um, I wouldn't see controlling as being setting a direction, but I would say having more infrastructure to be able to support, to actually be able to support. Meaning, people do come with ideas, and I suppose if someone had a really good idea we would, that needed some money, we would maybe try, try to do something with it. But um, there isn't formal structure now where you can say that, where let's say you needed 20 GPS units. It's not clear that you could maybe write to the foundation and maybe get units. Um, when I was leading hot, I would get emails all the time for things like, could you buy me a drone? Which, and, th and they weren't flippant. I, I shouldn't even say it like that. They were people with plants who needed that support. Well, if we want to map the entire world, there's places where it's harder to map. And how can we support that? Um, and there's also, if, when you work with formal organizations, sometimes it's simple things like people need a letter to, to do something. Um, which we would write for them now, but it's difficult as volunteers to make sure we able to, we're able to do that outreach and cover those needs. I don't think we're ever going to say, okay, everyone, we're only mapping addresses now. Stop m mapping the power lines and those trees, trees over there. And my favorite new tag, crocodile equals yes. Um, there's one instance of it, so get working. We, I don't think we're going to... Um, we're never going to get away from that. And I think that's what makes OpenStreetMap beautiful. So, you know, I, I don't mean really control when I say that. Time for one more question. Dale. Um, so you said that 
uh, the foundation and the OSM in general has really big technical problems. What are those technical problems? The big one to me that freaks me out, I don't know if this freaks out other people, is that we don't have distributed editing, and that's a big technical problem. I don't want to minimize that. But let's say that you, the UCL catches fire or something and we lose that. How long would it take us to get editing back up? Would you start crying? Or would it not be that bad? <laughs> what if they all melted? <laughs> but anyway, I, I just mean that there's, uh, there's other reasons for doing it. But I'm not downplaying that it's a huge technical problem. And we've already accomplished so much technically. But <laughs> yes, Grant here from the operations team is speaking at three if you're interested in those sorts of um, topics. Anyway, thank you everyone for coming and have a great conference.